The Cavalcade of America, presented by DuPont. Saturday, 150,000 people from all parts of the nation passed through the portals of the great pageant of the Pacific on the opening day of the 1939 San Francisco World's Fair. Here on man-made Treasure Island in beautiful San Francisco Bay, approximately 20 million people are expected to visit the towers and palaces in this wonderland of the New West. I wonder how many of these people will recall the days when the great empire on the shores of the Pacific was being built by men of vision and courage. One of these daring American frontiersmen was the colorful Indian scout, Kit Carson. It is his trail that we follow on the cavalcade of America tonight. Many songs have been inspired by the land of Kit Carson, by the vast, lonely prairies of the West. And as our overture tonight... Don Voorhees and the DuPont Cavalcade Orchestra play one of the most popular melodies of the Romantic West. Carry me back to the Lone Prairie. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
I imagine Kid Carson was a fellow who rarely got bored. Perhaps he didn't have time. For his life practically spanned the whole spectacular story of the Old West. Kit was born in Madison County, Kentucky, on Christmas Eve of the year 189. But while he was still a baby, his parents loaded their household goods into a covered wagon and moved on west to Franklin, Howard County, Missouri. The first step in Kit's lifelong restless pilgrimage. He grew up on the edge of the Indian country and learned to shoot and ride almost as soon as he could walk. By the time he was 17, he'd been working for two years as apprentice in a saddler's shop. Kit didn't like it much. It was too confining. But he had his dreams. Kit. Kit, lad. Papa, I thought you would... I just come to tell you something, Sonny. You don't like sitting around here in the store now, do you? No, I don't, Pa. Gee, if you were still alive, there's lots we could do together. You can do it anyway, Kit. All by yourself. There's the whole great West needing to be opened up. They'll be calling it a new empire before long. Those great frontiers out there. You've got to lead the new settlers on the right road, son. Blaze a trail to kingdom come and back. Sounds all right to me, Pa. You'll be too doggone busy to settle down yourself. And don't forget what I said. Gotta be getting back myself. Back. Back. Wait, Pa. Wait. Don't forget, son. They're waiting for you to get started. Pa, stick along with me. Yeah, pa, I go got a lot I want to ask you, Pa. Pa. Wake up. Wake up, you. Pa. Come on, boy. What were you mumbling about, anyhow? Oh, I'm sorry. I guess I was asleep. Well, your boss wouldn't care none for that. <laughs> Middle of the afternoon like this? Got the saddle mended yet? Oh, Mr. Martin. Yes, sir, your saddle's ready. All right, give her here. Where are you going, Mr. Martin? Santa Fe. Oh, I'd sure like to go along with you, Mr. Martin. Santa Fe. <laughs> A boy like you? Why, Santa Fe's 800 miles away. I know, that's why I want to go. It's west. I'm serious, Mr. Martin, honest I am. See, I'd work hard, too. And what would your boss think about that? You're his bound apprentice? I've got to get out west. Yeah, I reckon your father wouldn't like it much, youngster. My father wouldn't mind. How old are you, anyway? Right near 17. Seems to me like you'd never get your full growth, son. Mr. Martin, you've got to take me. All right, boy. But we got to see about it that quick. We're leaving today. <laughs> hereby given to all persons that Christopher Carson, a boy about 16 years old, small of his age but thick set, light hair, ran away from the subscriber living in Franklin, Howard County, Missouri, to whom he'd been bound to learn the saddler's trade on or about the 1st of September. All persons are notified not to harbor, support, or assist said boy under penalty of the law. One cent reward will be given to any person who will bring back the said boy. October 6, 1826. David Workman, Franklin, Missouri. But Kit, with his restless spirit, was on his way. 800 miles to Santa Fe. 800 miles of cloudbursts blizzards and dust storms, 800 miles of stampeding buffalo, of wolves, of raiding Indians, 800 miles of rivers and gullies, of forests and plains. And then down into Santa Fe lumbered the caravan, down into the enchanted city with its ancient governor's palace, its public inns, its cottonwood and locust trees, where guitars were softly strummed behind adobe walls, where church bells told the hours, and colorful crowds gathered in the sun-baked plaza, then up to the little town of Tau. With his wages in silver, his hair slicked down, he and his friend William Bent set out to see the town. And in a little cafe... I'm always glad to get back to Tau's. 
You can meet a powerful lot of nice folks here, Kit. Yeah, I reckon you can. Well, we've been in this place long enough. Let's go somewhere else. Okay. Hey, Bill. Well, <laughs> I mean, well, thank you. Hey, you and young. <laughs> you and I want you to meet Kid Carson. You're the famous trapper, ain't you, sir? I'm mighty proud to meet one of the mountain men. I haven't been back to Missouri, have you, Ewing? Nope. Reckon I'll never go back east again. This suits me. I've been trapping up in the mountains. Say, it was pretty fine, Bill. Ain't you tired of living here with all these Spaniards and Mexicans? You better come on back to Ben's Fort with me and Kip. Now, wait a minute, Bill. I ain't so sure I want to leave the house. They say there's fine trading at the fort, cousin. Hey, Kip, you hear what Ewing said? Who's that girl dancing up there? Oh, so that's why you don't want to leave town. Oh, I never said that. <laughs> hey, throw your hat out on the floor. If she dances on it, you're the favorite. Yeah, I dare you to throw your hat out there, kid. Oh, now, look. Hey, Phil, clutch on it. <laughs> you shouldn't have done that. Now we'll see if she does. My brand new hat. <laughs> what, she's done it. Dancing on your hat, Carson. How do you like that? She's better stop. She's trampling around the brim. <laughs> Carson will never leave Carl's now. Never. I'd like to get that hat back. I thought you wanted to go somewhere else tonight, eh? Yeah, Mr. Here it is. Oh, thank you, ma'am. Oh, Safer, this here is Kit Carson. Kid? Kit, not kid. Uh, Christopher, I reckon. But he's so young, and I thought... As a matter of fact, he doesn't like your dancing at all. <laughs> you don't like the dance? Oh, now, listen, fellas. He fella. said you trampled on the brim. You, Josefa. Oh, I didn't mean that. He wants to go somewhere else tonight. He said so. Well, I, I guess I don't know anything about these things, ma'am. I would never destroy your hat, Senor Keith. Oh, never mind them. You stay with her, Josefa. We will walk outside, huh? I'd like that. You will stay in town, won't you, Senor Keith? Well, I hadn't been thinking on it, but now... Wouldn't you... you like to come with us, uh, Carson? With the mountain men? Yeah. Quite a past lovers is starting out on an expedition tomorrow or the next day. Where are you going? Gila Mountain. We're hunting beaver. West, you're going west, huh? Yep. Always did want to get further out. Well, let's get going. Get yep. Come on. Come on. The thing you keep, you said you'd say, please. You want me to? Yes. Yes, I do, Senor Keith. Well, ma'am, I, I got to get further west. I'll be back, though. Yes. You come back to town, Senor Keith. You'll remember her face, I sure will. I won't be long. I promise. So Kit left Taos and Josefa, proud of his new role as a mountain man. In Kit's mind, the highest honor in that wild and trackless land. A few days later, the band of trappers were making camp one afternoon... Young confessed to him that hunting beaver wasn't the only purpose of the expedition. Uh, kid, I, uh, I got something to tell you, boy. Yes, sir? Ed Bailey's been out scouting. He just rode back in to tell me he'd seen Indians. You ain't never been in a fight with Indians, have you? No, sir. But I ain't afraid. I, uh, got something else I'd better tell you, kid. Of course, we're hunting beaver after a fashion if we come across any. But first and foremost, kid, uh... We're after Apaches. Well, that's why you give me a skinning knife, huh? Sure thing. If there's any scalping, you might as well be in on it. We're as good at taking hair as any Indians. You see, these Apaches around Salt River has been making trouble. Killed about 20 of our mountain men last year. We're out to punish them, that's all. Hey, Ewan, they're coming. Watch yourself now, kid. Watch yourself. They're riding to attack. I'll watch myself, Mr. Young. Seems like I heard that drum somewhere, sir. Get ready now, boys. They're riding fast. I remember now. Oh. That blast at Bailey. No, was too quick on the trigger. That started it. When they're near enough to do some good before you fire, kid. I'm waiting, Mr. Young. Now! I got one. See him? See him jump out there, horse? They're on the run, boys. Watch them go. <laughs> well, that was quick work. We'll look out for them again tomorrow, unless they come back tonight. Why, what you doing, kid? Putting a brass tack in my old rifle stock. This here was my father's gun. I brought some tacks along just in case I could decorate it up. That was my first Indian. <laughs> Well, 
With delight, Kit learned that Ewing Young planned to push up right on to California. The restless spirit of the boys stirred within him once more. Only 18 men were picked for this long trek, but Kit was one of them. The others were sent home. Even the Arizona desert, days without water, almost without food, couldn't dampen the boys' enthusiasm, and he was dazzled by his first sight of the Grand Canyon. At last, pushing westward, the little company reached San Jose in California. By now, they really were trapping beaver. But the Mexican authorities grew silly, reminding the Americanos that they were there without permission. Gringo, somebody out look. Well, I don't know, Kit. Looks like we might have trouble with these Mexicans. They act like we was an invading army. Been treating us pretty mean since we got here. A couple of rancheros have been all right. One of them even asked me to drink some wine yesterday. <laughs> maybe it was your personal charm, kid. <laughs> no, I tell you, they don't like us. Well, maybe it's my learning the Spanish. They ain't such bad fellas once you get to know them. Well, I'm cursed if I'm going to pull out on account of a few scowls. If they want to make trouble, let them try it. Hey, what's up over there? That's the mayor of the town, ain't it? I'll go over and see. All right, kid. Watch out for them, though. What's the matter, friend? Senor, los indios es loco. Molesta las casas con fuego. Los españoles es muerto. Somos los caballos es famosos. Hey, Ewing, come here. What's up, kid? The mayor says the mission Indians down on a rampage. Burned down two houses. Out for scalps. He says they stole some horses. Escape their own tribe back in the hills. Think we ought to help out some, kid? I sure do. I'll find a few of our boys and go out after them. Bring them killers back. Oh, See you later, you like it, I'm going for my horse. Senor, he, he go for us? Yeah, he goes for you. Senor, we Mexicanos have made a big mistake. We are very sorry. You stay with us as long as you like. <laughs> After staying in California for a few months, a new longing stirred in Kit's vagabond heart, calling him back to Taos, to the warm, colorful little town that was home to him. And there he married Josefa Jaramillo. And always Josefa dreamed that his roving spirit would be soothed, that his restless heart would tire of danger and wandering. And Kit had quite seriously decided to become a farmer. He was through with trailblazing forever. He bought oxen and plow and told his friends that he'd settled down. And there was joy in the heart of Josefa. You are happy, my kid? Happy? Why, sure, honey. I'd like to know why not. Now, each time before you ever said that you were content, my kid. But then you have listened to the thunder of horses and gone away to the mountain to the west. No, I'm here to stay. Once and for all, I'm through with all that Roman, Josefa. And you will be happy just to stay here at Taos with me. Yeah, honey, with you, sure. Sometimes there ain't much action around here, of course, but I always like Taos. You see, I remember the last time that Colonel Fairmont came. Oh, I'm finished with him, too. He's a wonderful man who's safer. Oh, but his explorations take too doggone much time. I got a home now and responsibilities. There's someone in the room. Oh, I'll go out and see who it is. Yeah, what is it? Oh, hello, Jed. Letter for you, kid. Calvary just brought this down. Oh, thanks, Jed. I had some grub? No, sir. I'll be getting home. Well, bye, kid. Bye. Oh, that's funny. Right official looking letter from the government or something. What is it, my kid? Sleeping buffaloes is from Fremont. Oh. Going on another of them expeditions. Can you imagine? Says he needs me. Is that fella crazy? As if I'd give up farming. Farming up at Dense Fort. Heading for California by way of Great Salt Lake. Taken 40 good plainsmen, but he needs a scout. You, you don't want to go, do you, Mikey? Well, of course not. Well, what would I be doing that for? Says there's bound to be trouble soon between us and Mexico, and California's going to be right in the thick of it. Listen, Miss Ava. We ought to be there, Kit. There'll be plenty happening. It seems to me, my kid, Colonel Fremont, that he's looking always for trouble. Well, now, you can't say that exactly, honey. Don't you forget how we surveyed the Rockies and... I'll never forget crossing the Sierra Nevadas with Fremont to get to Sutter's Fort. Those are pretty good days we had together. Yes. Yes, my kid, I suppose they were. Well, Sabre. Yes, please. Now, if I did go, just this time, just to help out a friend, you... Oh, kid. Well, now, honey, don't look at me like that. You believe me. Oh, I know. I know. Well... 
If I go, it'll be the last time. The last time, Jose. Of course he went, and in California, both Kit and Fremont found all the excitement they were looking for. They had a good deal to do with securing California's independence. Next, we find Kit on his way east to Washington from California in the spring of 1848, his saddlebags full of mail and official dispatches to the White House. He and his companions, some army men, have come as far as the Grand River in Utah. The river is a raging torrent. Slowly, Kit Carson and his men launch their frail raft into the seething river. Cautiously, they propel themselves midstream, whirled and buffeted by slashing sheets of foam, and at last they reach the opposite shore and hurry on to the fort. The great stockade gate creaks open. Hi, kid. Well, I'm so glad to see you again. I suppose you're heading back east. That's right, Tom. The mailbag's mighty precious on this trip. I got a suspicion they're carrying a lot of news about the discovery of that gold in California. All right. Uh, say, kid, that reminds me. A couple of fellows here the other day with a couple of letters for you. Been to Taos and... Oh. Sorry, I missed him. You heard you'd be passing through. Left letters with me. I said I'd give them to you. Got them in my pocket. There you are. Oh, thanks, Tom. Well, this one here's from Jack Taylor. He lives on the farm next to mine. Says my sheep are doing fine. Ought to get home for the shearing. Yeah. <laughs> I reckon the sheep must be sheared by now. That was written quite a while ago. Yeah, uh, who's the other one from? Hey, uh, let's see. Oh, it's from Joe. Works my farm for me. He says... Kit, what's the matter? Josefa. Come on inside, kid. I'll get you something. Josefa. It was a lonely towers to which Kit ultimately returned. After a few years, he was appointed Indian agent for New Mexico and made a good one. When the Civil War started, Kit promptly enlisted with the Union forces in the West and was promoted to the rank of Brigadier General. After the war, he came back once again to Taos, aging now and troubled by an old injury received on a hunting trip years before. Somehow, Kit knew he hadn't much longer to live. The old, tough, indomitable spirit was still there. General Carson, sir. Oh, Kit Carson will still do for me, son. What can I do for you? I'm the son of Frank Mason, sir. Do you remember him? Frank Mason? Why, sure I do. In California. He went back east years ago. He left his heart out here, though. When I wanted to come west, he gave me this letter to you. I just arrived in New Mexico. Well, I'm mighty pleased to see you, boy. Never you mind no letter. Frank Mason's son, huh? That good scrapper he was. Smart with horses, too. Yes, sir. So you think you'll try the West, huh? Well, the West's changing pretty fast. What you aiming to do out here, son? Anything I can find to do at first. Of course, later on, I'd like to get into transportation when the railroad comes through. Oh, yeah. That's the next step, ain't it? It would interest the young fellows, naturally. Don't you get roving too much, though. Roving? Oh, I mean, following trails until you don't know how to stop. I did too much of that. If you do, you'll never have a home. General, you oughtn't to feel that way. Look at the homes you've made possible for all the new settlers. Thousands of them. It'll be millions someday. Maybe. Wandering is hard on the women folk. I wish I'd spent a little more time with my Josefa. Oh, I tried to, but... Somehow, I always had to be on the move. I remember how she cried the last time I left her. I never saw her again. Boy, I'm sorry. Oh, the old days of the West. They're gone. Son, you go ahead and do the things you aim to do. I had the old West, and now you have the new. But remember, it's still got to be built. I reckon I wouldn't understand the new West very well. The young men who are coming out, they will. I'm satisfied to have known it as it was. The 
symbolic figure representing the old pioneers who blazed trails over the West and from whose campfire dust a thousand cities arose. The legends and memories of Kit Carson, the great frontiersman, form an immortal chapter of a vanished era in the cavalcade of America. Basil Risedale with another story of the Far West. Last Saturday marked the opening of the San Francisco 1939 World's Fair on 400-acre Treasure Island in San Francisco Bay, the largest island ever created by man. Twenty million people are expected to visit Treasure Island in 1939. Twenty million people who will thrill to the sight of the towers and palaces and countless exhibits in this pageant of the Pacific. In the homes and garden building facing the Great Court and World's Fair Tower, every phase of housing and home planning is displayed in vast indoor and outdoor exhibits. And outstanding among the exhibits in this building is the Wonder World of Chemistry, presented by DuPont. This exhibit is a cavalcade of science, fascinating marvels from the chemist's laboratory. The methods of research behind some of the most spectacular DuPont achievements are shown, with the amazing apparatus of chemistry performing before your eyes. There you see steps in the manufacture of transparent film, the process of making exotic perfumes and a rainbow of dyes from coal methods of making plastic products, and the way chinaware is decorated. A visual demonstration of DuPont's new sink and float process shows how coal is separated from slate and other minerals from rock. There's a dramatic presentation of neoprene, man-made rubber. A clever diorama pictures the construction of the Grand Coulee Dam. Another shows a scale reproduction of a Hollywood movie set. And tiny mannequins strut across the stage of a miniature fashion show displaying smart dresses made from DuPont rayon yarn. Yes, the wonder world of chemistry at the San Francisco World's Fair is full of surprises, full of sights to interest everyone, young or old. We hope that all of you will have the pleasure of visiting this fair, to say nothing of having the great experience of making a trip through the Rocky Mountain states and to beautiful California. In a later broadcast, we'll tell about the New York World's Fair, where there will be another wonder world of chemistry exhibit. Both of these DuPont exhibits will stir your imagination. They give you a glimpse of the future, a promise of the better living that chemical research is planning for all of us in the days that lie just ahead. And the simplest description of all is found in the words of the DuPont Pledge, better things for better living through chemistry. <laughs> the Cavalcade of America will present the story of one of our own musical masters, a man whose music is known to us all, George Gershwin. So until next week then at the same time, this is Thomas Jalmer saying good night and best wishes from DuPont. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.